welcome to Ramay Methodist English Service. Uh, we hope you have a great week and pray that you will have a blessed worship. Uh, Barnabas will be participating at Christmas Festival on December 21 at 2 p.m. And practice for that festival will follow after the worship. Then, selection of names for Secret Santa will follow after the worship. But plan and exchanging of presents will be on December 28. That will be all about Christmas party. That's all for that Christmas Amen. Thank you. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness and the children's children. This is the word of the Lord, so let us pray. Let us uh, bow down as we prepare our hearts to worship the King of Kings, our Lord Jesus. Holy God. We just want to come together as your people to worship you. We give you thanks and praise. We lay ourselves before you and give you what we are. Lord, we ask you to create in us a clean heart, O oh Lord, so we can be made holy in worshiping you this afternoon. Oh Lord, thank you for your presence. As we listen, as we sing, as we pray, fill our heart with your spirit and be alive into our dark places of our lives. Thank you for your presence with us, oh Lord. Knowing that you have the power to transform us, O oh Lord. Give us courage and faith and compassion and endurance to face any hardship. Open our eyes to see you walking beside us, O oh Lord, protecting us, encouraging us, and loving us. Thank you, Lord, for this blessed moment. May you be enthroned as we worship you. We just want to thank you, Lord, for the presence of each and every one of us this afternoon, especially our pastor Stanley, we just want to give you thanks for him, O oh Lord. May you be with him as he deliver your word for us. Open our hearts to receive your word, O oh God. Thank you for this name and church. Thank you for all the pastors in this church. And we also want to extend um, our thankfulness to you for our families back home in the Philippines and we ask you to please bless them as you bless us here in Korea. Thank you Lord. We praise you, we worship you, and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
chapter 1, verse 46. Luke chapter 1, verse 46. Passages from verse 46 to 56. We'll be looking at uh, Mary's song, Jesus' uh, mother, Mary, as she uh, bursts out in praise after she hears the news uh, that through her womb, uh, womb that Jesus will come. Okay, so Luke chapter 1, verse 46 to 56. Let's read on uh, one voice. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has performed mighty deeds with his power. He has scattered those who are proud of their endless thoughts. He has brought the rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful, to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for a months. And then return home. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for uh, calling us uh, out of this world and into your presence today. Father, we thank you that we can uh, we know you and that we can worship you, that we can praise you, we can pray to you, and we can hear your word at this time, Lord. Father, I pray that you will come to us. I pray that you will speak to us. I pray that you will bless us, Lord. Father, we need you, uh, we need your blessing, and we need your uh, encounter with you today, Lord, so that we may live for you uh, this week, Father. So I pray that you will come, and I pray that you will speak to us powerfully, and I pray that you will open our hearts, and our ears, and our minds to accept your word, Father. And I pray that you will bless each one of us here, Lord, and speak to us through your word, Lord. And during this season of Advent, Lord, help us um, to feel and experience more of your love, Grace, Lord, speak to us. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, every year, on October 12th, uh, many countries uh, celebrate Columbus Day. Uh, for example, the United States, Latin America, Spain, uh, Italy, uh, Bahamas celebrate October 12th, Columbus Day. Uh, it celebrates uh, the discovery of America by Christopher Columbus in October 12th. 1491. Uh, he, he left Spain and went uh, westward, uh, looking for India. And he was looking for a quick route to India uh, to get spice, uh, silk, and many important uh, commodities uh, to bring to Europe. And so he was going westward, and instead of landing in India, he, le he finds and discovers the Americas. Right? It was an accident. And then uh, through, through this discovery, we call the Columbian Exchange, where uh, a lot of um, animals, uh, plants, and resources are exchanged from America uh, to Europe, and it caused uh, what do you call? It caused uh, um, these two continents to become prosperous, and it changed uh, the world. Right. So a lot of the materials were going from here and going uh, to the other. So it's such an important uh, point of world uh, history. And so, uh, these nations uh, celebrate. And it was because of Christopher Columbus that we, uh, we live in a better world. So October 12th, every year, uh, they celebrate. The United States, Spain, Italy, many parts of the world. So uh, Columbus Day, October 12th, is a very, uh, you know, it's a very uh, good day to remember. But that holiday uh, is not a good day, a joyous occasion for all people, especially for the Native Americans that lived in North America and South America. Columbus Day represents, uh, it brings them uh, uh, emotion of anger, uh, hatred, uh, and bad memories. Why? Because from the day, from October 12, 1491, uh, from the discovery of Columbus, uh, it started the beginning of the end of their lives. What happens? Uh, the whites 
uh, from Europe come to America and then they take over their land uh, with their guns, they take over uh, the cities and enslave them, kill a lot of them, and then the Europeans bring their disease and more than 50% of the native people uh, die uh, through uh, the disease. So October 12th is a joyous occasion uh, for some people and it is not a joyous, uh, joyous occasion for other people, depending on who you ask. Well, many people, when they think of Christmas, they think it's a joyous, a joyous occasion, right? It's the end of the year, students have vacation, adults have uh, you know, a short uh, vacation, it's the end of the year, we share presents, right? And most of all, Jesus comes, right? So it is a joyous occasion, Christmas, and we're all waiting for Christmas uh, as well, right? But is it uh, a joyous occasion? Is Christmas a joyous uh, occasion for all people? So I want us uh, to look, look at uh, today's passage and think about uh, that question. So let's look at today's passage today. Verse 46, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. 47, my, And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. So we see Mary uh, praises God, not only with her lips, not only with her body, from the innermost part of her being from her soul and her spirit rejoices in God. Right? When is the last time? When your innermost being uh, worshipped and rejoices in God. Why is Mary rejoicing in God? Well, if you look in verse 32 and 33, what does God say? You will have a child, and he will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end, right? Mary is joyful that God is finally sending uh, Jesus the Messiah. But what, what is more, God is sending the Messiah through her womb. So we read on. Verse 44, he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, right? Mary was not a significant person. She came from a very small city. She was a very insignificant person. So she said, God, who am I? that through my womb that you send the Savior of the world. If you sent Jesus through a womb of a king, I would understand. If you sent uh, Jesus through a womb of the wife of a high priest, I would understand. If you would send uh, Jesus through a womb of someone significant, I would understand. But who am I, Lord, that you have been mindful of the humble state of his servant? Who am I that you have chosen me uh, to bring the Savior of the world into this world. And then she goes on, what? From now on, all generations will call me blessed, right? Generations after generations after me, people will uh, praise Jesus. And when they think of Jesus, they will remember who? Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? Uh, for more than 1,000 years, in many churches all around the world, we recite uh, the Apostles' Creed. Uh, Apostles' Creed is, uh, was written in 4th century and it, it, it contains all the important teachings of the apostles. So they would uh, recite this in the beginning of his worship and this is what we believe and to uh, uh, distinguish themselves from the cults. Even our Amen Methodist Church, we recite that the, uh, towards the beginning of our worship. And as they recite this uh, all around the church for over a thousand years, it goes like this, right? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of Virgin Mary, right? Every week, all around the world, we recite this, remember who? That through Mary, uh, that Jesus uh, came, right? From now on, verse 48, all generation will call me blessed, right? For the Mighty One has done great things for me, holy is his name. So we see Mary praising God for Jesus and more so that Jesus will come through her womb. But we read on verse 50 uh, to 53, uh, right? Jesus is not, uh, you know, she's not only praising Jesus for herself, but Jesus is God's gift to the whole world. So let's read on verse, uh, let's read verse 50 together. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation, right? I fear God, and God has blessed me and used me to, to bring the Savior of this world, right? Yes, uh, the Catholic Church is right. Mary is a very uh, 
what you call honorable person. But you know, but we should not like raise her up as uh, one of the God. But she is because of her faith, because of her humbleness. Uh, God has chosen her indeed, right? So I fear God, and God has blessed me. But what? God's mercy extends to those who fear Him, to to those who obey Him, to those who believe in Him, from generation uh, to generation, right? So the coming of baby Jesus, uh, it will be a joyous occasion for who? For those uh, who fear Him, for who? For those who obey Him, for those who uh, believe in Him, right? But here we read on in verse 51 to 53, what will happen when? The baby Jesus comes, right? So let's uh, let's try to see what what goes on here. We see a God of uh, justice, right? Let's read it together, verse fifty-one to fifty-three once again, and see the justice of God that will start when the baby Jesus comes. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. Up to there, right? So when baby Jesus comes, what will God do? He will lift, verse 52, he will lift up the humble, right? Those who do not trust in themselves, but those who rely on God and, and worship God, God will lift them up, lift up the humble when baby Jesus comes, right? Uh, verse 53, he, he has filled the hungry with good things, right? Those who are hungry uh, uh, for God's righteousness, who are hungry for God's salvation, they will be uh, filled, right? For the humble, for the hungry, when the baby Jesus comes, God will finally, what? Reward them, right? But, what? That is not the only thing God does, right? God is love, but God is also a God of a justice. And we see here in verse uh, 51, when the baby Jesus comes, God's justice will come. What we see here, He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost heart, heart, right? And then also we see in verse 52, He has brought down rulers from their thrones who worship themselves, who serve uh, themselves, right? And verse 53, but has sent the rich away in an empty, right? So we see in the Old Testament, God leaves the proud alone, right? When they're serving themselves, God does not judge them right away, right? And then we see in, in the Old Testament also the hungry, the humble, they're suffering, but God does not reward them right away. And when does that judgment start? It started when baby uh, Jesus uh, came, when God's judgment came, right? So we think of Christmas, and we think of the coming of Jesus, but the coming of Jesus is the beginning of God's judgment. The humble, uh, the hungry will be filled, but what? The proud, uh, those who do not fear Him, will be judged, right? So is Christmas a joyous occasion? Uh, depending on who you ask. Depending on whether you ask the white or the native people, just like on this day, is Christmas a joyous occasion? Depending on who uh, you ask. Uh, look at here, verse 51 and fi uh, to 53, right? Jesus was not born yet. But what does Mary say? Verse 52, He has brought down, right? But has lifted up the humble. Verse 53, He has filled the hungry, but has sent the rich away empty. Right. What is uh, Mary saying? It has already occurred. Mm -hmm. Even though baby Jesus has not been born, she's so sure that it's going to happen. God's justice is going to happen. Uh, that she's sure. And then we read on, right? What else can we know about Christmas? What does Christmas signify? What can we know about God's love and grace through Christmas? Well, let's read in verse 54 and 55 together. He has held his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. So through Christmas, what should we remember? We should remember that God is faithful. God remembers his promise. Why? In Old Testament, over 700 times, God promises to send His Messiah. Mm -hmm. He keeps His promise to send His one and only Son. Right. So when we think of Christmas, yes, we should think about God's love and mercy, but more so that He is a faithful God. Right. So in Christmas, remember He kept His promise. 
then we can believe all of his other promises, right? We talked about Matthew chapter 6, 33. Seek first his kingdom and all his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. We can believe in that promise because in Christmas, God has kept the hardest promise, sending his one and only uh, son. And so I pray during this Christmas that you remember the faithfulness of God's promise. Um, I have a, a niece, uh, six years old. I have a nephew, four years old. Uh, they go to preschool and they're first, uh, and the niece is a first grader. And then we never told them about, about Santa Claus, but one day, uh, I'm sure at school, they heard about Santa Claus and that Santa Claus gives presents to children. So, you know, a um, few months before Christmas of every year, every time uh, the kids misbehave, my brother or their father would always say, hey, if you misbehave, uh, Santa Claus will not give you presents. Santa Claus gives presents only to good children. So if you're a naughty children, you won't receive uh, you know, presents. I don't know, if, 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 uh, it's not only my brother who does that, it's the American culture. Uh, you know, that's how they make the kids uh, behave. Right? Uh, I don't know if they do that in Korea. Mr. Lee, does your family do that? Do you do that? <laughs> okay, that's Christians. We should not do that, right? But they do that. Well, they do that. They say, yeah. Koreans do that as well, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, but, but there, is a, there is a song. They even made a song, you know, to encourage the kids to behave because Santa Claus will only be one, right? I'm sure you guys know this song, right? You better watch out. You better not cry. Better not talk. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and checking in twice. Gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better not cry. Better not talk. I'm telling you why. <laughs> to town, right? Do you guys know this song? Yeah. Yeah. Right. You better be nice, right? Or Santa Claus is not going to uh, give you presents, right? So for kids who behave, uh, Christmas will be a joyous occasion, right? But, but for kids who do not misbe uh, who misbehave, Christmas is not going to be a joyous occasion because they're not going to receive uh, presents from Santa Claus. So Christmas uh, is going to be a joyous occasion for who? Uh, for those who fear God, for those who are humble, for, do, uh, for those who are hungry, right, will be a joyous occasion. So if you live for God, uh, and if you uh, did not put your hope in this world, but put, the, put your hopes in God, and you are uh, hungry, uh, you are suffering, when well, Christmas, you should remind yourself that God is a God of God, justice. He came, and then what? He will come again, right, the second time. So the, during Christmas, we remember Jesus came 2,000 years ago and the judgment started. Uh, he has rewarded the righteous and he has uh, you know, brought punishment uh, to, to those who do not fear him. But also we remember that Jesus will come on a, uh, in some, some time later in the future. Jesus will come again and that will be the final uh, judgment. So for those of you who fear God, for those who are, who are humble, for those who are hungry, uh, may Christmas uh, be an encouragement that God will keep His promise and that He will uh, reward you. But also, on the other hand, for those who do not fear Him, for those of us, for those in our family, uh, those among our friends that do not fear Him, that are proud, uh, we, uh, we must remember that it's not a joyous uh, occasion for them, and that it's also a season to remind them that Jesus came and that Jesus will come again. That, uh, uh, that will be the last judgment and there is uh, nothing besides. So may Christmas, when you think of Christmas, I pray that you will think about uh, that it's not going to be a joyous occasion uh, for all people. And I pray that it can be a joyous occasion for all your family, uh, for all your friends uh, during uh, this uh, season. And so that is what, uh, through Mary's song, we see the faithfulness of God and the justice of uh, through Christmas. So can we take this time uh, just to pray? If you are one of those that fear God and that you have sought His righteousness, be encouraged 
during Christmas that he has come, he has came 2,000 years ago to bring justice, and then one day he will come to reward you. And if there is among you, among your family, among your friends that have not yet feared God, um, I pray that during this season that they uh, can fear Him and that this season could be truly a joyous occasion for them. So let's pray for our family and let's share uh, the greatest gift uh, to them. So let's just take this time and to pray.